So let's bring in Asia expert and author of Nuclear Showdown, North Korea Takes on the World, Gordon Chang, good friend of the program as well. Gordon, nice to see you as always. Uh, you agree with the CIA director that the North Korean regime has never been weaker than right now? Well, probably that's true, except for maybe at the end of the Korean War, the fighting in 1953. But right now, we do know that U.N. sanctions, U.S. sanctions have severely crippled the regime. The money flows are not there. We've seen, for instance, that uh, Office Number 39, which is the Kim family slush fund, is running out of cash, hmm. according to Chinese sources. And South Koreans say that the regime in Pyongyang is not going to have any more foreign currency reserves by October at the current rate of depletion. That's a real indication that the sanctions are working. And that's the reason why I think Kim Jong-un actually has come to the table right now, because he wants sanctions relief. Yeah, well, he's, he's certainly come to the table before and wanted meetings with U.S. presidents before. Let's deal with percentages real quick. And I know handicapping this stuff is hard. Uh, chance that North Korea comes out of this and promises to give up their nuclear weapons is what? Um, after maybe six months, nine months, uh, that's an 85 percent chance. All right, 80, 85 percent chance that they will promise to do it. What's your chance that they will actually follow through on that promise? Um, I think it's actually pretty high, especially if President Trump insists on verification. The only way any deal with North Korea will work is that mm. they have no choice but to comply. In other words, that we have the strictest sanction, uh, inspections regime on Earth. Um, we've proposed that in the past. We haven't gotten it in those prior deals, including the 1994 agreed yeah. framework. If we get it this time, then we can be pretty sure that the Kims will comply because we've got inspectors there. Yeah, but they can kick the inspectors out. They can say we're no longer going to abide by the deal. They did that before in 2006. They did it in 2009. And if they were to do that, we would then impose the sanctions again, and we would probably impose a blockade. There are all sorts of reasons why Kim, I'm sure that's what he would like to do. I'm sure that's what he's planning to do. But there are a lot of reasons why he can't do that, especially if President Trump is going to use all the elements of American power, not only against the North Koreans, but also against their big power sponsors, China and Russia. Well, and you talk about sending a message to China specifically. This is what was in the South China Sea yesterday. Uh, it is often called thousands of tons of sovereign American power, 1,000 plus feet of the USS Carl Vinson pulling into Da Nang, Vietnam, which is often uh, now looked to to the United States. Vietnam as a counterweight uh, to China. Uh, the CIA director a asked on Fox News Sunday about China. This is what he had to say. This administration is prepared and engaged in pushing back against the Chinese threats so that we can have a good relationship with China in a way that the world desperately needs. Can you have a good relationship with a country where they just uh, voted to give their leader lifelong dictatorship? Yeah, this is a problem because Xi Jinping is often compared to Mao. But Xi is actually using the language and the imagery of China's imperial leaders who actually felt that there was only one sovereign state in the world. That was China. Everybody else was a tributary. So, you know, that sets up an existential challenge to the United States. Xi Jinping has been attacking democracy across the board, especially in the last year or so. Um, it's going to be very difficult. The only way that you can have an acceptable relationship with them, as uh, CIA Director Pompeo said, we push back at them, we push back at hard, so they realize that they're dealing with a different United States than they've seen over the last four decades. Can you push back at them hard, as you say, and at the same time rely on them to push hard on North Korea that we want them to do? The only way to get them to help on North Korea is to impose costs on China that are so severe that they have no choice but to comply. Yeah, you, we've we, tried. You, you, say, you say that, though, and we've been talking about costs for a long time. We haven't sanctioned Chinese banks. We haven't individually sanctioned Chinese individuals. We haven't threatened to delist them from SWIFT. Uh, so far, uh, it seems as though the most we've done is put uh, tariffs on steel that they export to the United States, which is a whopping 2.2 percent of imported steel. It, 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 we're, this is nothing. Yeah, and, and if it were President Chang, you would see Bank of China unplugged from the global financial system for devising and operating well, a money laundering scheme for the North Why haven't we Koreans. done that yet? Uh, because I think there are a lot of stakeholders in the federal government who feel that that would rock the financial markets. But if you feel North Korea poses an existential threat, as most people do, 
then, yeah, the price for that is unplugging some Chinese banks and some unpleasant conversations with the Chinese leader. But eventually that gets us to a much better place because all of these theories that we have had about dealing with China, which sound good to the ear, in fact, just have not worked. Well, and as you point out, uh, North Korea is an existential threat and China is an existential uh, challenge to American uh, supremacy. Gordon, always good to see you, sir. We appreciate it.